I think the standard of memory was uh, being bullish just after 9-11 and saying that the market would go up after that. Um, there was no real, I mean, it didn't have to go up after that. Uh, you know, it could have been the start of a, an almighty bear market with sort of misery and doom and everything else, but it turned out to be a one-off event. Uh, I obviously got into, well, I didn't obviously get into the market, but I was, got into the market in a big way after the 87 crash. And that also sort of turned out to be a bit of a one-off event. But I, my basic view then was that, you know, there's been, you know, you're buying low uh, after that. Uh, it didn't quite work out like that. The market was sort of sideways for a long time before it eventually went up. And I think probably in the recent past, um, really, um, you know, the bull run after the financial crisis, 2009, from March 2009, the market just shot up and it hasn't really come back after that. So um, aspects like that are probably the standouts. Uh, one I enjoyed, which I an event which I enjoyed, which I knew at the time where the market, where this market would go. Um, after that was the, uh, I think it was in 2012 or 11 when uh, Mario Draghi said, "Don't be short of the euro," and uh, I, that was around one dollar twenty-one, and that turned out to be the the bottom of the euro uh, in terms of the of the trading range. I've basically enjoyed actually many wise people getting the euro wrong. Because most people have said the euro is a disaster, it's going to disappear because Greece is going to go out of the eurozone. It's going to be a total failure, and it's still there. So I think that's those are sort of the memorable aspects. But the crowd being wrong with the euro, it had so many experts uh, who obviously do not like the idea of the eurozone anyway or the EU, just saying that the euro is going to die. You've got sovereign debt, and you've got Greece and the pigs and all these sorts of uh, uh, things going on. And I've enjoyed see them, seeing them sort of wince and whimper uh, as the euro survived and actually went up to $1.40 quite recently. In fact, it's, the problem with the euro is actually its strength, uh, not its weakness. So it's almost like fooling. You're fool, it's fooled most of the people uh, almost all of the time in, in the recent past, which, which I enjoy. And you know, it, it sort of causes people to be humble, uh, or some people to be humble. Uh, probably actually also on that same sort of theme, the fall of gold over the last three years, there's hardly, there's nobody got that right. There's hardly, I don't think there's anybody, I mean, the, the closest anybody got to getting that right was George Soros uh, getting out of, of gold um, at $1,530, uh, $1, which was about $300 off, nearly $400 off the top. But after that, but apart from that, everybody thought that do, the gold was going to go to $4,000, $5,000 an ounce by now, you know, from 2011, 2012. So that's everybody getting it wrong. There's nobody said, oh yeah, I was short of gold at 1900 and I've just made billions. That hasn't happened. So people can get it wrong and I do enjoy um, uh, the way that this is a, it's a very level, the financial market's a very level playing field in terms of who, who gets it right and who gets it wrong. You can be a billionaire one day and a pauper the next and also the other way around, which is truly merit meritocratic. And you know, it's probably the way it should be. You know, it's, 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 it, I think that's healthy. Can you give us an example of a trade you might have implemented in the past that you'd not repeat today? Um, well, the, I would say my me the most memorable trade I've done in the recent past was actually to go um, long of dollar yen around the 80 yen mark uh, when um, the Abenomics came into Japan at the end of uh, 2012. Uh, and that was um, a trade which was so compelling uh, that I, although I don't normally trade, I actually did that trade uh, because it just seemed to be a fantastic trade to do, just a you know money for old rope type of trade. Very very small, uh, but it was just uh, on uh, irresistible, and uh, it went up to I think in the, now it's around 105 or 102 or something like that, 102 yen. But it went up 20. The yen weakened by 20 percent in about three or four months. And uh, I found out, or everybody found out, um, this was, let's like, say, November 2012. Uh, a month later, they announced that George Soros had gone long of dollar yen, the same trade, the same level, and made a billion dollars. So that's a trade that uh, sort, of doesn't, sort of doesn't quite answer the question, but it's a trade that is probably irrepeatable, and I probably wouldn't do again because I wouldn't actually do, because I don't trade, but it, I just could not resist uh, having that trade uh, you know, it was that it was that compelling to do, and I suppose it's one of those things that you know he made a billion dollars out of that. He made a billion dollars or a billion pound, probably a billion dollars in 1992 by going short of the pound. Um, those are his two best trades, 
and it sort of shows that you don't actually have to trade that often. You just said, you know, you actually can actually just wait for the the really compelling trade, the really obvious trade to do, and then go for the jugular. Let's just say at the moment, that might be that uh, AstraZeneca will be taken over within, you know, by the end of the year. So at 43 pounds or 42 pounds, it's just going to happen. And so you just have that in your mind and you do something like that. Um, but the, uh, tra the, the trades that, uh, the trades I wouldn't do now are really uh, ordinary equity trades. I would just go for um, the indices or the, or, the, or the currencies because I think equity trades, you're, 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 you can be out of the loop in quite a big way, especially in terms, actually not necessarily the small caps, but in the, 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 the mid caps or blue chips. Uh, you just get hurt by broker upgrades and downgrades and things that they don't make much difference to the share price, but they just hit you in a sort of random fashion. So I think I would probably avoid that type of normal equity trading.